In many action film storylines, the protagonist always has a mentor to look up to for guidance. Neo has Morpheus, Harry Potter has Dumbledore, and Luke Skywalker has, probably the most popular one, Yoda. For Liu Kang and Kung Lao, they had Lord Raiden. Based on the Japanese deity Raijin, taking visual inspiration from the movies Assassin Trio, The Three Storms, and Lightning from Big Trouble in Little China, Raiden has quite the inspiration that many people could resonate with. Today, we're going to be ranking all 16 of Raiden's finishers from the worst to the best. Fight. Good morning, afternoon, and evening everyone. My name is Nick, and welcome to, or welcome back to the channel. If you're new, consider dropping a like and clicking the subscribe button to join the WAC Pack today and for more Mortal content. In this episode of All Character Finishers Ranked, we'll be looking at Raiden. This protector turned destroyer turned back to protector has been in many of the Mortal Kombat games with a variety of finishers. With the use of electricity, each being ranked based on creativity, pacing, impact among the franchise, and personality. Here are the ground rules that will apply for Raiden. Rule number one, brutalities, stage fatalities, and mortalities will not be included on this list. Rule number two, fatalities from Mortal Kombat Armageddon won't count on this list. Rule number three, recreated fatalities will count as their own entry in this list. As mentioned in previous episodes, many games do something different with each of these classic finishers, for better or for worse, and each will count as its own on this list. For example, there are various editions of the electrocution decapitation, with each one doing something different. In return, each will be ranked differently. Though we're covering a character with godlike powers, his finishers can either be a hit or a miss, so let's dig in. Also a warning for my photosensitive viewers, there are several uses of lightning elements, which include lots of flashing lights. So if you're someone who could be triggered by these flashing lights, viewer discretion is advised. With that, grab your amulet, electric staff, rice hat, and consult the Elder Gods as we rank all 16 of Raiden's fatalities across the Mortal Kombat games. Number 16. Starting things off by jumping into Mortal Kombat Deception. This title was the first game in the series to introduce us to Dark Raiden. After sacrificing himself and reforming as a dark warrior dressed in black robes and dark armor, Raiden became more of a menacing version of himself. So with this more violent side awakened, what did he bring to Mortal Kombat Deception? <laughs> Fatality. Oh, uh, okay, I guess. I've stated in my Sub-Zero Finisher video, which you can check out above, I am not the biggest fan of self-destruct fatalities. This is why I ranked Cyber Sub-Zero's Ice Explosion fatality pretty low. This also applies to Raiden. I just don't like the idea of using his dark powers to kill the opponent and himself. It makes him feel like a noob with his powers, rather than a god with immense power at his disposal. It also doesn't help that Raiden's Harakiri does the exact same thing without killing his opponent. With the fast pacing, similar to two other finishers in the same game and killing himself, makes this Raiden's worst finisher of all time. Number 15. Electric flying our way into Mortal Kombat 4. In my opinion, many of the finishers in this game can be regarded as the worst in the entire series, which is really saying something when this game exists, many of which feel unfinished or very underwhelming. Sadly, Raiden's finisher falls into this trend. Fatality. Of all the ways Raiden has electrocuted his opponent, this comes off as one of the weakest finishers. Weakest of the finishers that don't cause the body to go boom. Some complain how MK vs DC really toned down the finishers by removing blood or dismemberment, but this is just embarrassing for a mainline Mortal Kombat game. Somehow, Raiden manages to lift the opponent and channel electricity through his wooden staff, so take that physics and that's really it. No explosion or anything to make it over the top, no turning the opponent into a skeleton, nothing special to make it stand out. It's just a finisher that's shockingly bad. Number 14. 
headed into the crossover with Mortal Kombat vs. DC. With the Mortal Kombat characters, many of them brought a classic finisher from the original trilogy or created a new finisher for the teen-rated game. With Raiden's first finisher, they created one that really doesn't stick the landing for me. Raiden wins. Fatality. To be honest, this feels more like a heroic brutality rather than a fatality. It feels like a fusion of Superman and Captain Marvel's finishers from the same game, and neither were that special. Sure, they weren't able to do an electric uppercut or an electric decapitation, since those are more violent and probably couldn't work in a teen-rated game, so they had to create something to work for the game. For that reason, that's why it ranks higher than the bottom two, is that they had to work around a mandate. Number 13. Jumping into the best fighter from 2015 with Mortal Kombat X. After revisiting this game, I completely forgot how awesome some of the finishers are. Scorpion, Sub-Zero, and Triborg have some of the cool finishers in the whole game. Sadly, Raiden's first finisher is more on the flip side and is one of the weaker ones in the whole game. Of all the MKX finishers, this came off as a weak entry. Many finishers in this game took advantage of the new Gore-Tec engine. This one just creates a unique way to electrocute the opponent. However, I feel the dead body lacks some polish. I feel the body should be a bit charred or flaking away to show how much electricity just channeled through them. Overall, it's pretty meh, but it could be better. Number 12. Revisiting Mortal Kombat vs. DC Where the first finisher was an original fatality made for the game, we were expecting to see some classic finisher remade. Though we knew some blood and gore would be removed, I'm just happy that a classic was brought back in this misfire. Raven wins. Flawless victory. Of the remade finishers from the classic trilogy, this one kind of works for me. I do appreciate Raiden bringing back the electrocution. Since they couldn't make the body explode, they turn them into bones, which is still an MK staple for many classic finishers. Overall, for an MK vs DC finisher, this one isn't that bad, but it's not really that good either. Number 11. Moving ahead to the first PlayStation 2 MK game and the first 3D MK game I ever played with Mortal Kombat Deadly Alliance. I tend to rank the finishers from this game pretty low, many of which were ripoffs, didn't fit the character, or they lingered too long. Does Raiden break the trend, or does he follow the trend? Let's find out. <laughs> Fatality. Now I do appreciate they made the body go boom, but this one does fall into one of the trends from previous episodes, where it lingers too long. The pacing feels like it's a few seconds too long, which I feel two of the camera angle shots could have been cut. Also, I think making the body turn black when being electrocuted is a nice idea, it really makes it hard to see them when they blend into the background. With those errors, it still manages to be a blast, and I think it's one of the better ones in this game. Number 10. Headed into Mortal Kombat 4 once again. I've bashed quite a bit in the previous episodes about the quality of these finishers. I've stated that they lack polish and they look sloppy, but one they managed to do right was a remake of the Electrocution finisher from Mortal Kombat 2. Fatality. Now I wouldn't consider this an improvement over the classic, but I do think it's a good finisher for Mortal Kombat 4. Having the body explode with three different camera angles feels like it's right out of the 90s. Yeah, this finisher doesn't work the best on certain stages with the head breaking through the ceiling, but it's a nice finisher overall. Number 9. Ascending back into the dark Mortal Kombat X. Whereas the first finisher was pretty underwhelming, how does Raiden's second fatality improve over the first? Well, let's see. 
Now this one does improve quite a bit over the first one. I do like how it feels a bit like a reimagining of the electric decapitation, but taking advantage of the gore tech. Having the eyeballs pop out is a good use of shock value, no pun intended, and ending it all with a head explosion is really cool. Like the organs popping from the head, I think this is cool. Number 8. Jumping back into Mortal Kombat Deception for Raiden's second fatality. Where I wasn't a fan of Raiden's harakiri how does Raiden take advantage of his new dark form and show how godly powerful he is? Let's get right into it. <laughs> Now I find this a cool new spin on Raiden's old classic. Instead of electrocuting the opponent with just Raiden's power, he decides to pull a Final Fantasy Materia and summon electricity from the gods to kill you. Having Raiden channel electricity from the Elder Gods then throw it to you is a pretty cool concept, something I'd love to see return in a future Mortal Kombat game. Number 7 Time to jump back into the arcade classic Mortal Kombat 1. The first MK game managed to create finishers that the cast would implement in titles nearly 30 years later, with Raiden being heavily inspired by Rei Jin and Lightning from Big Trouble in Little China, this highlighted more of the fantastical violence of Mortal Kombat. Raiden wins. Flawless victory fatality. Next to the spine rip and heart rip, Raiden's head electrocution is one of the best finishers inside of Mortal Kombat 1, in my opinion. It's great to see how this had been adapted in future titles as well. Also a special shout out to the censored version, where the person gets electrocuted into a skeleton. I know I made the rule that I'm not going to include censored fatalities, but this one is pretty nice. In the end, it was great to see this finisher adapted in several future titles. Number 6. Finally making our way into the most recent title with Mortal Kombat 11. These finishers are more cinematic and flashy than ever. Each finisher was injected with so much personality, and several used so many elements to make each finisher so unique. In my opinion, many of MK11's finishers are some of the best within the series, but not all of them are amazing. Some can be shockingly underwhelming. To state some positives, I do think having all the limbs pulled apart is pretty cool, then having the limbs be slammed into the opponent is a nice addition, but I think the ending leaves much to be desired. If the opponent exploded in the end, then that would've made it a bit better, but that's just me. It's a cool finisher, but could use a different ender to make it stand out a bit more. Number 5. Time to revisit the now 10 year old game, Mortal Kombat 2011. For this game, I am surprised both of Raiden's finishers aren't recreations of his classics, but are new original fatalities introduced to the game. So let's start digging into the first MK2011 finisher. Now I will give credit to the team for creating a new way for Raiden to use his electricity to kill the opponent. Removing the brain and... liver? Heart? Lung? I don't know. But then to put it back in and use some electric kinesis is really cool. I just wish this power was kind of introduced to the story or in the game, which makes it feel a bit weird that he can just do this all of a sudden. But I will give the team credit by creating a new way to explode the opponent. Number 4. Time to jump into Mortal Kombat 2, the game awarded the bloodiest game of 1994 by Electronic Gaming Monthly. This game did an amazing job improving everything. New characters that became fan favorites, introducing new special moves, and creating some of the best fatalities. In this game, both of Raiden's kick a lot of ass, starting with one to make Saitama proud. this one is pretty simple in concept, I think this one is still amazing. 
Being hit with a down 2 with godly force just shows how powerful the demigod truly is. I also think the outro with him shooting lightning into the sky and then having the head bounce down is also a really nice touch. Where many characters decapitated their opponents with punches and weapons, Raiden is punching above his weight. Number 3. Visiting Mortal Kombat 2011 one more time. Where the first one was a creative new way to use electricity to explode the opponent, the second just manages to truly finish them off and not let the fight be a draw. Maybe something King Arthur should have done. This one is just awesome. In case you couldn't tell, Raiden's just a scratch fatality is a clear nod to Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Now stand aside, worthy adversary. Tis but a scratch. This finisher is a good mix of making a subtle nod while being bloody and brutal at the exact same time. It is a slam dunk for me. Number two. Let's insert two more tokens and revisit Mortal Kombat 2 one more time. Where the first one highlighted One Punch Man before One Punch Man was punching, we wanted to see how the team managed to incorporate electricity into the next finisher. Like Sandy from Greece, the power he's supplying is electrifying. Fatality. This one is a blast. Where the last one showed the strength Raiden had, this one shows how powerful he truly is. For a finisher created in 1993, it still holds up in 2021. This finisher was also brought back into the new NRS era of Mortal Kombat games by becoming a brutality. With those factors, this is what makes the original Electrocution finisher take the silver medal of all of Raiden's finishers. Number 1. Revisiting Mortal Kombat 11 for our top spot. In this story, we get to see the return of Dark Raiden, a much darker, no duh, version of Raiden who will kill those who are a threat to Earth. In the story mode, we get to see Raiden create blades of electricity to destroy demons from the nether realm, so we were hoping to see these make an appearance in a finisher. This fatality truly is one we were happy to see. Of all of Raiden's fatalities, I think this one is the most brutal and awesome one. Implementing the electric blades to cut the opponent's arms off while cutting them in half, raising them off the ground while pulling off the top half, and ending it all by splitting the head is absolutely awesome. It's also another great tribute to the classic electric decapitation from Mortal Kombat 1, but done in an extremely brutal fashion. With all these additions, great pacing, and paying tribute to a classic finisher, this is what makes Raiden's direct current the best of all of his fatalities in the entire series. So there you have my ranking of all 16 of Raiden's fatalities across all Mortal Kombat games. What is your ranking of all of Raiden's fatalities? If you don't want to share them all, what's your top 5 best and your top 5 worst? Be sure to share those in the comments down below and I'll surely get back to you. While you're down there, let's keep it civil and not attack each other about our opinions. We aren't going to agree on everything, which is what makes discussion more fun. Be sure to drop a like and click the subscribe button for more content like this. Engaging with you all about Mortal Kombat is so much fun, so let's keep this going. Also, share this video and series of videos with some of your friends. It would really help the channel out a lot, as your contribution helps create content. Tune in next time as we cover the first big bad of Mortal Kombat and probably the best villain in the series, Shang Tsung. You mine. As always, thank you all very much for tuning into this video. My name is Nick, and I guess I'll end it all with some wise words from Raiden himself. Ready for the goal!